And tonight, President Trump will give his second State of the Union address after it was delayed by the partial government shutdown. But what does this mean for investors? Joining me now, Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman, along with American Enterprise Institution's uh, resident scholar, Norman Ornstein. Rick, I want to go ahead and start with you. Expectations for tonight. He's got a hit on a lot of different subjects. Well, he will. Uh, his last uh, speech uh, last year was 80 minutes. He hit everything. Uh, I think, first of all, he's going to be taking a lot of credit for the state of the economy, uh, and deservedly so. I mean, most uh, the economy is uh, going strong, despite you know some signs of weakening here and there. But most metrics are good. The job market is looking great. Uh, we're starting to see earnings growth and things like that. So he's going to take credit for that. I think what investors are looking for is news on trade. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing that we could hear tonight is uh, him telling us that he has a meeting. He has actually scheduled a meeting with President Xi of China. That might be considered a prelude to a deal. Uh, on the other hand, if he doesn't announce that, I mean, there's been some chatter that he could do that. If he doesn't have anything to say about that, uh, markets might be disappointed tomorrow and think, oh, maybe there is no deal. And, uh, you know, for all these sort of reading of tea leaves on trade, uh, a lot of, so far it hasn't really told us much. And uh, trade experts say these two sides are probably really far apart on the most difficult issues. So the question is, uh, will there be some way to find a deal and maybe just kind of put the big issues aside? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the big focuses of, on investors' minds certainly is that China trade issue. But also, uh, the president seems to take every platform or opportunity he has to speak to talk about immigration, to talk oh, about the walls. Yeah, so, without a doubt. I mean, what are you expecting there? I'm expecting more of the same. I don't think he's going to change his tune on this at all. We know that one of his guests is going to be somebody whose family was victimized by an, an immigrant uh, who was in the country illegally. I mean, this is the kind of fear-mongering Trump has been doing since he, really since he announced as a candidate, we're going to get more of that. You know, what's interesting about this is the public is has not budged on this issue for the most part. So polls show that about 60 percent of people do not favor this idea of a wall, and that has been steady. I mean, Trump's drumbeat on this has really not changed any opinion. So you have about 40 percent who do favor the wall, but that's a minority of voters. So Trump, uh, this is one of his top priorities, and uh, you know, it's not a priority with uh, the majority of voters. I want to go out to Norman uh, and talk about the fact that the president and Fed chair Jerome Powell had dinner last night. Uh, the Fed is, you know, supposed to act independently, and I'm not suggesting that having dinner changes that relationship. But, you know, when I think back to President Obama and Janet Yellen, I don't remember them having dinner too often. No, that certainly didn't happen. And uh, they came away as buddies, apparently. But, of course, Trump has criticized Powell and the Fed frequently for raising interest rates. It's also important to note that he's uh, nominated David Malpass to be head of the World Bank, somebody who's been harshly critical of the bank before, and uh, especially its treatment of China. But I think there are a couple of other things that we need to keep in mind here. One is we had the shutdown end, which enabled the president to give this State of the Union after Nancy Pelosi had said not until it's over. But 11 days from now, we have another deadline. And uh, we don't have a resolution of the issue surrounding the wall. And we have the president who basically precipitated the shutdown because of criticism he got from Ann Coulter and Lou Dobbs and others. And whether he would accept a compromise, we don't know. But we also know there's been an enormous amount of talk around the Capitol with fear from Republicans in the Senate that the president is going to use this occasion to declare the state of emergency or is on the verge of doing so, which would uh, create turmoil out there. The second thing to keep in mind is that uh, we got a notice from the White House today that the president's speech would be all about national unity. And just a couple of minutes later, he did a tweet ripping apart Chuck Schumer. So uh, unity apparently does not extend to Democrats. And I suspect we're going to find a great deal of tension in this chamber and not very many occasions where all of the members on both sides of the aisle rise up in unison to clap. No, I'm Rick Newman here in New York. You've been following the scene in Washington for a long time. So what is the way yeah. out for Trump on uh, immigration? He's not going to get the border wall funding the way he wants to get it, uh, but he can't just shut down the government for the rest of the year. So how do we get past this? So I, I see a couple of possible outcomes. One is that they reach a deal where they provide funding for what's called a wall, but is not a physical wall. 
It's basically money for sensors and drones and other uh, smart ways of patrolling the border. And he declares victory and says, I've got my wall. Now, my guess is that, uh, and of course, that's not going to happen unless Democrats also get something like status, and I would suspect permanent status for the Dreamers. That will not satisfy Ann Coulter, Lou Dobbs, uh, Laura Ingram, or uh, some of the others who are unhappy about what Trump has done on this. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if we get uh, a, at the same time that they accept a deal, the president also declares a state of emergency, which is likely to be slapped down by the courts because he doesn't have a statute enabling him to do that in this particular case. And very likely uh, the Congress would pass a motion of disapproval. But then the president could go out there and say to uh, the people who have been upset with him about the wall, don't blame me, blame the Democrat judges and the swamp in Congress that's done it. So we're still in very uncharted territory with the problem being that members of Congress could reach a deal here very, very easily. But the president's being driven by people at his extreme anti-immigration uh, uh, base. Norm, real quick, uh, coming behind the State of the Union, we're going to have uh, this report from the Commerce Department that many people think is going to find that auto imports are a national security threat. Uh, and that, of course, would give Trump the, uh, the authority to impose tariffs on automotive imports. How do you see that playing out? You know, we're uh, sort of teetering at the edge here of whether we're going to get some sorts of trade deals, including with China, that uh, will take us away from the brink, or whether we're going to see an escalation uh, of this kind of conflict. If what we do get is a significant change in auto imports, we're headed, I think, down a very, very dangerous path, one that could lead to uh, a much greater tariff war. And of course, we also have to keep in mind that looming in the background is uh, what happens if there's a hard Brexit with the turmoil that will follow in Europe. And the last thing I think Europeans want in the aftermath of that is more trade wars with the United States. Norman, this is all coming as well uh, as the president's uh, inaugural committee received a subpoena from federal investigators asking for documents that were related to donations and spending. This is also coming in the wake of his schedule being released as well and showing that he didn't spend as much executive time uh, as other presidents have. So the State of the Union tonight uh, sort of shrouded by a little controversy as well. A lot of controversy. You know, the, the joke about the schedule is uh, they show that it was 60 percent in executive time and the rest of the time was spent watching television. Uh, but. Obviously, you have people in the White House who leaked this schedule, which is embarrassing to the president. More significant is this subpoena is coming not from the Mueller team, but from the Southern District of New York. And I would keep a very close watch on the Southern District, which may end up being more damaging to Trump and to the people around him and to his business and to his family than even what uh, Robert Mueller does. And all of this, which aims at a whole series of scandals and potential scandals, are going to uh, probably come to a head within the next few months. That also will be uh, looming over this State of the Union. A lot of things out there that will go beyond whatever the president says. And we know in his interview uh, at the Super Bowl uh, time before the State of the Union, he said to Margaret Brennan, if they tried to impeach me, it would fail. And how could they impeach somebody who's had the best record in two years of any president in the history of the United States? I'm not sure that is an accurate reflection of where we are. But we may be moving in a very different direction within a matter of months. All right. Norman Ornstein, thank you. Rick Newman, thanks for sure being thing. here as well.